and this is a scrying of the angel Sapuriel, who appears in leaf uh, 10a of the book Amzes Nageses Harda, also known as Libra Loga. So I used the call to the Aether, and then in Aethers, and instead of an Aether name, I used the angel name Sapuriel. And I'm feeling some interesting tingling energy coming up from both the Book of Silvered Leaves and the leaf from which, and the leaf of Libra Loga that I found the name in. And the sense I'm getting is there's a big, it's like a big cloak is coming over me. And they're saying this is kind of like the cover of a book. And the angels are about me before they identify Superior or allow Superior to come through. They want me to sort of take within me the, the cloak or the gravity of reading this particular book, a book of God, basically. And they're identifying the two books of God that I have my hands in right now. And they're trying to say that this is, that if it's something of God, then that makes it holy. And so this is important for somebody who is working with something of the divine, taking up of something divine and diving in as it were to holy knowledge, holy wisdom, that this is not something to be taken lightly and that in a lot of ways, the charges of the Sphinx to know, to dare, to will, and to be silent, there is sort of like the, the cover, as it were, just as somebody who goes undercover, literally the covering of a book, is done to um, set it apart, to sort of create a Saturnian boundary about it, and therefore to not... Um, go in lightly when it comes to this sort of thing. So I am taking this seriously and now uh, Superior, just getting a little bit into this, I'm seeing a large book open and I'm seeing many, many pages. If you ever, if you ever see the old phone books where somebody is literally flipping through the pages, it's like that except it keeps going, right? And the spine, the back of the book, is intimately related to the heart of the divine. So it's as if um, this knowledge and this wisdom and this understanding is emanating from this heart of the divine and is sending itself forward into, um, into the consciousness of us, we small parts of the divine that are here to bear witness. And there's this, um, I'm feeling like this energetic rush through my body. It's as if there's a certain level of not just knowledge, but again, wisdom and understanding and a bit of a crowned version of that. If one has ever seen the, um, the paintings of Christ with a crown that is uh, about his heart, that's very much what this is feeling like. So this is sort of uh, a blending, as it were, of the divine knowledge that you might expect from, let's say, a rabbi or a wizard or something like that, blending with the heart of the mystic, right? And that's sort of a lot of what this fusion of these um, two... Um, it's, it's like this vision is a fusion of those two things. And so, because it's going beyond the arcane and into the holy and the divine... And so now I'm getting the sense of what the heavens which dwell in Superior are like. And by the way, the spelling is S-A-P-V-R-I-E-L. And the sense that I'm getting is, is that there's this big, it's as if you take all the pages of this divine wisdom and it's like this ring about the earth. They form this ring. And it's not like laying them end to end. It literally is like a book where the entire spine is the circumference of the earth. It's very beautiful. And um, it's like uh, each of us is drawn at specific locations uh, of this part. 
and trying to work with others who are also reading their own part of the divine that is, again, ringing around the earth. And the ring around the earth, I'm being told, symbolizes both infinity, the infinity of the divine, the cyclicality of the divine as it appears on earth, but also um, this, uh, this infinitude and speaking to different people. Uh, so that's the symbol there and all of the different hearts that are drawn to it and mag magnetized for it and in the glorious uh, infinitude of ways that the divine appears to, to people. And so when I'm looking, considering a superior's um, function here, because um, I sort of have like this overview and then I am interested in the functionality, but also the heart of beings with whom I work like this, uh, the function is to um, maintain... Um, consistency isn't the right word, and neither is regularity but coherence is probably the best word uh, among these different parts. And so even in the paradoxical parts, there's a, there's a degree of coherence that is emerging here. And just as the divine heart is, is coherent, even though it appears in an infinitude of ways. And so I am just easing into this. And now I'm seeing Superior appearing before me in a hooded way. And it's like he takes off his hood and it's like his head is made up of millions of and billions of symbols that are shining and shimmering. So it's a very beautiful effect. And um, I see his hands sort of reach out to mine and hold mine as if you were to, to hold not quite a dance partner, not quite, and maybe more like a child, if you are trying to direct them and guide them and the child is willing, that's sort of what he's doing right now, or she, I mean, it's, I'm getting a kind of a non-binary vibe here, but there's this um, slow turning that is going on here with Superior, he, he or she or they, we'll just call them they, is moving me about in this circle. So this is sort of like what it's like to um, seek out additional divine knowledge isn't quite it. It's more like the divine crown of the heart emanating out information. Um, information in terms of both wisdom and understanding. So it's like I'm taken back to my confirmation days of when um, we were, we would go over the creeds and we would go over the sacraments and we would say, you know, we would read something and then there was this exposition and it's, uh, it was like, what does this mean? I and mean, usually would start off with, we should fear and love God such that, etc. right? So it's that same idea of fear, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, sort of like this awe. And so the sense I'm getting is that it's sort of like that. It's sort of this fusion of wisdom and understanding, right? That is at the crown. And so that same rotation, again, noting that a crown is round, you know, is sort of taking somebody's heart through, you know, all of these different infinite manifestations of God. So there's a great beauty. That's sort of like the first thing that, that they want to tell me is that there's this great beauty of the divine revealing itself to us. So again, speaking to the heart, but also, um, you know, if you were to speak of the third eye and the crown, that is the beauty of the integration of us. And so really, you know, it starts with this idea that all is one. So Hentupan in Greek or Toniel in Enochian. And what Superior is doing is helping us, you know, both commit to memory and really a heart memory, the many ways in which the divine um, has linked us together right? And even though there's like this separation that kind of comes with death and with, with um, 
struggle and conflict. It's sort of like that struggle and conflict that's separating and coming together again, that's like a beating heart. And so it's really about, as we get older, coming to appreciate the beating heart of life that we all get this wonderful uh, chance to experience. So that's about it. I'm very grateful for um, the divine showing me this angel name and also giving me this opportunity to experience the heavens, which encompass superior. So this would probably be um, a relatively decent uh, angel to work with. And uh, it, I mean, relatively early on is what I'm saying. They're all great to work with. Don't get me wrong. Um, but in terms of like where you are in terms of your journey, I would say that this is a pretty good one if you're looking for kind of like one something like Enochian to to take you along. So uh, that's it. The vision ends. And thank you so much for watching.